What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Round Review. Round 8 was a pretty big round for a lot of coaches. Um, plenty of 150 plus scores and thankfully I was able to get a couple of those guys in my team. So I end up scoring a 2374 which is my best score for the year. I believe that that was a few more points than last round. Yeah, so 16 points more on the previous week which is pretty good. So Obviously very happy with that. So round rank of 5,509, as you can see on the screen there, and up to 6,568 overall, which again is another, I've just got it there, 2,227 spots I moved up in the rankings this week, which is always nice, always good to be going, heading in that right direction, even though uh, a couple of things uh, extra could have even gone my way, even though a lot did go my way this week. Could have been a huge week and even made more ground, but happy to be going in the right direction. I think I was what would have been around, yeah, that sort of 16, 17K, 18K mark early in the year. So like what, round one, what was I there? 19,000, round two, 1950. So I only moved up a couple hundred spots, moved up a bit that week, moved down that week. So then 13, eight, 11, seven. So yeah, I've only moved down one week, which is pretty good. So. Very happy to be moving in the right direction since round one. Hopefully we can move uh, in the top 5K this week. That'd be really nice. But in terms of my plus three and negative three, plus three's got to go to Tom Green, I think. Uh, held him for his week suspension uh, a few weeks ago, and he's come back uh, with a 136 and a 170, so averaging over 150 in his two weeks back. So you can't really ask for anything more than that. Just would have been good if I put him captain, but he was... Uh, fantastic. I do want to give a bit of an honourable mention quickly as well to Lockie Whitfield, 130 points. Bit of a pod for me, uh, not in very many teams at all. And to get the 130 is obviously one thing, but I will actually go into a couple more points with him when we speak about him in a sec. But yeah, very, very happy with him as well. Negative three, I think it's I think it's got to go to Jack Steele, unfortunately. 85 on debut. I just have a curse with these premium midfielders, as you probably heard me say in the uh, AFL Fantasy Phoenix podcast that Round one, I started with Laird, obviously had a really poor game, and that's what caused such a dramatic price drop for him. And also Josh Kelly uh, get injured uh, in round one, and then Bont had a pretty underwhelming start to the year. Went to Tom Green in round two, his worst score for the year, 90 in his first week that I bring him in. Um, Toot Miller, bring him in a few weeks ago. He gets injured on 48 and was taking all of you in that game, which is weird. So low score, dropped in cash, and then I bring Jack Steele in this week, and he has a poor one. So... Haven't really been able to bring in any Premier Mids for a while. Last few years, I haven't been able to really bring in a Premier Mid that's gone well, except for Rory Laird when I brought him in last year. So it, when you bring in Premier Mids, you're meant to be excited bringing him into your team. You're meant to be, great, I finally got Laird, I finally got Steel, I finally got Bont, I finally got Green. These type of guys I brought in or started with, you're meant to be happy and and be able to watch him play, but it hasn't been that far that hasn't been that for me so far this year. So hopefully Steele can respond. I'll be actually watching him live in person at that Crows game on Sunday, uh, sort of around midday. So looking forward to that. But let's get into the all the players from the game. So first of all, we'll start with Nick Dacos. Cop the tag, obviously, from Sydney Ryan Clark. To, to be getting to 84 is pretty good. Um, last year we saw some of these really low scores, but obviously completely different player Nick Dacos this year. It was still good to see him get to at least an 80, even with being tagged. I don't think he got tagged much in the last quarter. I didn't watch much of this game, so it was just, I think they dropped the tag in the last quarter, which meant he was able to get that 20, 30-point bump to get to the 84. But still, nevertheless, I'm not too disappointed with that. So if that's going to be the worst game for the year, then I'll definitely take it. Tom Stewart, 88. I don't know if he cop. I didn't see him cop much attention from, from Ben Keyes, but Geelong didn't really seem to be chipping it around too much. But Stuart did his thing. 88 is is fine, I guess. It would have been good if he got the 100, but other guys uh, picked up the slack for him this week. Uh, Will Day, bit the same as well. Uh, I didn't watch this game, watch the other game on the watch along, but it seemed like he he didn't do too much in terms of his marks and tackles. Got a little bit of the ball still, but normally he gets a few more marks and tackles. So again, if that's going to be one of his worst scores for you, which it was his worst score for the year so far, then I'm not too fussed with that. Lockie Whitfield, so obviously very, very happy. Not only was uh, it a big score for him, but it was also very unique. So not many people got this score. He was owned by, I think, 1%. A couple of people brought him in so far this uh, this week. Tomorrow I'll be going through the trade talk, so we be interested to see where he is on the targets. But yeah, Bulldogs for defenders, we know, give up points. And it was just, yeah, good to finally get a good score for him. But also the cash gen. So he's now got a break in a 67 
He's now going to be making money, which is good. And if he can get to eight 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 hundred k eight fifty k, when it comes to round fifteen, if I've got my rookies off field, he can go to a top six defender I haven't got or or whatever position I need to get um, in, and and we're sweet. So that's pretty much what I could have asked for him. He's got Collingwood this week, St Kilda the week after. So St Kilda obviously should be good, but Collingwood. We'll have to see how he goes. Ruben Jinby did his thing, 60 and 64% game time. He's I can trade him out. I don't think I can this week, just based on the moves I want to do, which I'll talk about later. But um, he's just doing his thing. So he's not going down much in cash. So he's not necessarily an urgent trade out. But if you can get him up to someone, if he's one, of you, if he's more likely a lot of coaches' worst issue. But and you can trade him. But for me, I just can't quite do the move I want to. Um, trading him out. So, um, Chin Cotter, what more can he do? Three seventies, um, and that was his worst score for the year. But he scored what seventy five, seventy six, and seventy seven. But he's just fantastic. Negative twenty break, uh, negative twelve break even actually. Sorry, um, it's obviously up a time, but still obviously very low. Still got plenty of cash to make, which is great. So, when it comes to his buy in round fifteen, he's just he's going to be a great guy to move on. At hopefully, a good price to to someone that's coming off that buy. Um, Darcy Wilmot, 34, a bit disappointing. So he had that 60, was it 60 last week or 50 that he got the week before? Um, what did he get there? 65, yes, that was um, one of his highest scores for the year. But again, dropping a 34, not great. He's got some good games to come with Essendon, Gold Coast, Adelaide, then Hawthorne after his buy. But for me, he's probably a guy that I'm happy to get rid of this week. Uh, Lockie Cowan obviously didn't play, but he could come back in for Nick Newman, but apparently he didn't play well in the VFL, so maybe he doesn't come back in. Part of me doesn't want him to come back in because, well, this week anyway, because I can at least then loop a Jinbi or um, someone like that on my bench um, and then bring and be able to play them, so and maybe get two looks at a rookie. Um, moving to the midfield, Tim Taranto, 170 is captain, I think was just the right call. Uh, it was just a shame that a lot of guys went big this week, so it sort of didn't seem like a good call. But 170 is captain's great, and he continues his ton run, and he's just been fantastic. So, yeah, definitely one of the best picks of the year. Jack Steele, as I mentioned, was really quiet. He played forward at times as well. I don't know if that was just to rest him because it was North Melbourne or whatever, but he still had 30, he still had the most CBAs for any St Kilda player, and... So I'm not sure if that... I think it was just a game thing. I think he'll be fine moving forward, but something to watch. Um, hopefully, it's not a common thing that um, happens moving forward. Hopefully, bounces back this week. Rory Laird continues his sort of his run of four tons in a row now. He's a very, very good target, I think, to be bringing in now. I think his run... See, there you go. So four hundreds in a row. This one here, again, we've talked about the heat and him being sick in this game. Tagged here with Drew, tagged here by Ace. So the only three games he's gone sub-100 have been due to something happening. So even the last two games he's been tagged, uh, sorry, last two of the last three, he got tagged by Connor Nash at times here, and then he got tagged by Atkins, and he's still got 100. So I think he's right for the pick. He's gone down a fair bit of cash. He's got St. Kilda this week, great matchup. I think he's a great target. So definitely look at him, and we'll talk about him as well um, in the trade talk video tomorrow. Bont has been great the last three weeks. Obviously, he got that 90 last week against Hawthorne when he got tagged, but the fact that he's gone two times over 125 in his last three is pretty good. So he's looking like a, being a decent pick now, averaging 107.5. He's, he's in a good range. Probably not really enough value, if I'd say, to pick him up, but been very, very good um, for me for the most part this year. Tom Green. What more can I say? He's just been fantastic. 962. If he's to have even a pretty good... If he's to have a good game over 110 this week, he's going to be closing in on that million dollar mark, which I didn't even think he'd get to this year. But 170 points. Again, didn't realise he had that big a ceiling, but he was fantastic. And that's why he got my plus three. He was immense. Um, Brad Fiorini, I was pretty happy with considering that he played a little bit of midfield in the first half, then purely I went a wing in the second half. The good, the thing I liked is that his game time got a little bit of a boost as well. So he was up to 82%. So that was good to see a little bump. Is that going to be a common um, thing moving forward? I hope so, because obviously more time on the ground to score points, which is always great. But I'm hoping he gets more CBAs moving forward. He's still a, not a bad buy. This is probably the final week to jump on him. Um, even if he goes at 80 for the next few weeks, he's still going to make another probably 100 or so K. So... Still good target, good buy, so I would still wouldn't mind him as a trading option. Will Ashcroft, 61. That's two 60s in the last three weeks, so I know he got that 115 um, last week, but 
if you again, if you were to take that score out, he hasn't gone. He's only gone over ninety twice, and he's sort of he's gone a few seventies there. And the fact that he's at six thirty nine, break even to sixty six, he's not going to make. I don't think a huge much huge amount of cash um, left to make. But so you could move him on. I don't think I will this week, but he's definitely one I'll consider next week because he does have that round twelve buy as well. So that's one thing that I'll look at. Ollie Holland's fantastic eighty six. I'm I'm am glad I did hold on to him. And he's still got a bit more cash to make. I can play him on field comfortably, I think, now. And, and yeah, what's his matchup this week? They've got... Who have they got? Um, Bulldogs at Marvel, which could actually be a decent game if he if he rolls back and gets some plus sixes. So could be decent there. And, and I think he's happy enough to play on field for a couple of weeks. Um, and you can... The, the best thing for him would be if I can hold him to around 15 which is buy, and then move him on to an underpriced premium then, that would be ideal. But we'll have to see if he, if he can keep this scoring rate up. And if he, cause if he drops a 40 next week, then he, he's got to go the week after because his cash is going to stop. But he's been very, very good the last fortnight. Ron Marshall, now, went off with an ankle injury late in the game there. Um, scored an 83, was looking good, looking on track for 100. But um, unfortunately, with the ankle injury, they rested him. So his game time, what did he, he didn't play much in the last quarter and... His game time reflected only 67%. So he was on track for 100. Um, if he's out, it makes uh, my trades pretty simple this week. Just go up to English. But if he's in, then obviously keep. So hopefully he's in and hopefully I can do my upgrades elsewhere. But if he's not, it's not the worst thing in the world for me because it is my ticket to get English because it's not going to cost me much. It's only going to cost me about 90K. So, yeah. Uh, Sean Darcy, uh, 76. It really cost me this week. Um, like this season, he'd been pretty good. Pretty consistent here, close enough to English without like really being costly. Like I think it was one of the games here. It might have been this one in round four here where English went one forty, so it was about a fifty point swing. And then this week it was a seventy point swing. Besides that, he's been close enough. It's get like if Laddams doesn't play this week, um, or and if even if Laddams does play, I think it's a good matchup for Darcy anyway. So hopefully he goes well this week and can be close to English, so it doesn't hurt me again. Um, then we got Josh Dunkley, obviously first huge score for the for the year, which is obviously great to see. Sort of makes up for a bit of his lower scores to start the year. I think he's back in business. I think he'll be fine from here on in an average around that 105 to 110 mark. He probably won't be better than Taranto, I don't think. So he'd be the number two forward, but I think he's back in business. So looking forward to seeing what he can do in the back end of the year. Connor Rosie, 96. Again, that I'll take that. Um, Again, he was fine. He's, he's, I think he's still got a lot of the ball. I think it was just a lot of handballs. Gave away a couple of free kicks. Um, didn't have um, the tackle numbers he'd had in the previous few weeks. Um, so, yeah, doesn't normally have that many handballs. Like, look at that. That's clearly the most handballs he's had for the year. So, yeah, maybe... I, don't, I didn't watch the game, so maybe he caught the tension. But um, 96 is fine. He's still averaging 97. It's, he's still going to be top six forward, so he's not an issue. Errol Goulden, pre-season Errol Goulden um, showed up as well, which is fantastic. Averaging now over 100, which is fantastic. Um, his break-in is now low, so he's going to continue to make money. Um, yeah, just obviously last two weeks has been great, obviously with that the 116, 161, so it's two high scores. If you, for some reason, jumped on him after that 70, um, or even if you jumped on this week, that would have been obviously a great move if you did do that. But gone up nearly 100k for the year, he's just going to continue to rise, and I think he's a top six forward, so he's just been uh, very good last fortnight, really all year. Harry Sheasel, another 98 score, he was solid again, um, breaking him in 88, he's not, you're not bringing him in, well, so you're not looking at him now as a money maker. we're looking at him now as probably going to be a top sort of six to eight defender or forward, so yeah, he's a, just a season-long keeper, he's been fantastic, uh, best, probably one of the best picks of the year, but even though everyone had him, Jack Zebel, good to see a huge ceiling score for him. I thought this could be a week he could do it. I didn't have the balls, obviously, to put in captain, obviously, with the whole, is he injured, is he not, is he going to, like, it was listed forward. There's that little doubt there on the final game. But quickest ton, I think, Jane Piaski put on Twitter um, from him, 104 points, I think, uh, I think it was, like, just for half time. So incredible that he got his ton. He, he, nearly had, he nearly had his top score for the year in the first half, so which is ridiculous. So... Yeah, 168, 18 marks, fantastic. Port is a bit of a tougher matchup. Sydney's tough, and then also Collingwood. It does help that those two are at Marvel. So hopefully he can put up some good scores there um, and continue to be a good pick. I think he's going to be a top six forward to defend the way he's playing and that role. 
Kay Chandler was a big disappointment. Probably lucky he didn't get my negative three, to be honest. Um, I just thought Jack Steele, just because he's a primo, I expected a 100 plus from him. But Chandler could have easily got that uh, negative three. 37. Hawthorne, the MCG, I could keep him for. But I think at this stage, I'm trading him just because I've got to get rid of these rookies. And, and yeah, unfortunately, he's just not... I don't want a 30 on my, on my ground. So at the moment, he's going. Luke Pedler, 45. If that's going to be his lowest score for the year, that's pretty good. Geelong and Geelong is tough. That's his lowest score for the year. The other 40 came against Carlton. Played a lot more time on ground uh, than what he has been the past few weeks, which is good. Um, and I think he'll be fine. St Kilda this week. Still going to break him to 48. If he was to drop another 50 or sub-50, then next week we can think about trading. But I think you still hold him this week. Uh, Van Ruin, 41. Um, obviously, two-week suspension. They are challenging it. I think he should get off, personally. I don't think he should have got suspended. I think it was just an accident. Um, even though it was a bit... Of, it was more clumsy than anything. I don't think it was anything suspension-wise, but we'll have to see what happens at the tribunal with that one. But it could go either way. And then Alan David Jr. was a bit quiet for his 34 as well. Again, if you can go him down to a rookie and then do another move on the other end and still get the play you want, I think that's the move because 34, he dropped a few K this week. Um break him to 48. He's not really making much more money. He obviously got hasn't got the greatest role um, and not getting a lot of the ball. So, yeah, I think he can potentially go. So, so yeah, that's pretty much how I went. I was pretty, as I said, very, very happy with the week um, from round eight. Uh, looking ahead to round nine, hopefully we get another good week for me. Um, and for all of you guys, obviously, but obviously I want to have a good week as well. Um, in terms of the trades I'm looking at at this early stage, I've I've actually got a bit of movement because I've got some rookies I can go down to. I can go up to... I've got a few different options. Like, for example, you could go Ashcroft to an Andrew Brayshaw. That's something I've looked at. I'm 2K short of going Ashcroft to Jordan Dawson unless Josh Fay gets named and I go him instead. If I wanted to do that, I'm considering that because Dawson, I think, is going to be a top one or two defender. So getting him now. And plus, I need a premium on that round 14 buy, so that would help. But at the moment... I'm looking at going Chandler down to Blake Drury and playing Pedler on field, like straight up, which again is fine. I'm not too fussed with that. But um, then, sorry, uh, no, other, sorry, other way. I'm looking at going Wilmot down to Blake Drury, sorry. Um, and then I'm looking at going K Chandler up to, all the way up to um, Will Power from Gold Coast. I like his role at the moment. That round 30 buy is really handy. And the fact that he went up. Um, Will Power's not coming up. That's interesting. Um, oh, because I'm trading him in this week. That's right. So, because uh, I've got him in the team. So, let's just go quickly to what my team is looking like uh, here. So, I've got to go to round nine. So, Will Power, he went up what? Um, 59K this week. And break him to 33. If he's to go and get another 100, which against West Coast, he's got a decent chance. So he's going to be over 700K next week. And he's going to keep rising in price, hopefully, um, with that really good buy as well, um, to make some good cash play for me through these buys. The fact that he's got Adelaide, Carlton, and Hawthorne, pretty good matchups in the buys, to be fair. Um, so if he can just average 90 through the next three weeks and then do well in the buys, he'll be a good pick. And that's what I'm looking at doing. So... Um, yeah, I like that move at the moment. Um, so, yeah, that's um, the the play that I'm looking at doing. And then, yeah, if Faye gets named, that's obviously an option. But Drury is the pick, I think, because I can always get Faye next week. But, again, for Dawson, and I want to go Ashcroft out instead, then I can always get Dawson in there. So, perfect. Well, that's all uh, for the video today. Again, always appreciate you guys tuning in, as always. If you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do bottom right-hand corner. Um, we have hit the thousand, so right, which I mentioned a few times. Appreciate everyone uh, getting on that, help me reach that goal. Next goal, two thousand. So if you help me reach two thousand subscribers, very much appreciated. Make sure you go and subscribe, uh, like the video if you enjoyed the video. As always, turn notifications on so don't miss when I go live or upload any other content in the future. And then follow all my social media links in the description below. I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday trade talk video, so tune in for that. That seems to be the most popular video on the channel actually at the moment, which is fantastic. So uh, let me know um, what you guys think of the trade talk video. And also let me know in the comments below what you guys are looking at doing with your trades this week. Let me know your plus threes and negative threes, your scores, everything like that. Any other questions, put them in the comments below and I'll answer them when I get a chance to. So until the next video, catch you guys then. I'm out. Cheers.
Cheers.